Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. The movie starts during the intense times of the war in Mexico. Estrella, a young student attending a local elementary school, is sitting in her class where the teacher is passionately asking them questions about stories in fairy tale. Their teacher then assigns them a creative challenge to craft their very own fairy tales. It's a chance to let their imaginations soar and to create stories that mirror their thoughts. In the midst of this task, Estrella picks up her pencil and starts writing away. Her young and creative mind dives into a captivating realm. She envisions a tale about a prince who harbors an unusual desire to transform into a tiger. She writes about how he longs to become a tiger, because they are predators and always remember that they have to hunt. A pretty deep and philosophical imagination for a young kid though. Meanwhile, on the other side, in a dark alley, we see a boy named Shine. He is a street smart orphan navigating the hustle and bustle of the streets. His story is one of survival, and he's developed a skill for seizing fleeting opportunities to rob. He stays on the corner of the dark alley keeping watch as two men come in, visibly scuffling. They seem to be drunk too. He notices that one of them is Kako, a henchman associated with a notorious crime lord. It's a moment where Shine's calculated instincts kick in. He sees a vulnerable target. As Kako momentarily steps aside to relieve himself, Shine deftly steals his phone and then after some thought, his gun. Ignorant, the man keeps standing with his back to Shine. The kid musters up his courage and finds himself pointing the gun at the huge man's back, but is eventually unable to pull the trigger due to his conscience. Just as he hesitates, Kako moves back to turn around and Shine retreats into the shadows, grappling with his internal turmoil. It's a fleeting moment that reveals the fragility of the life Shine leads, causing the poor little boy to fall down and break in tears as he confronts the weight of his existence. Meanwhile, back on the other side, Estrella's classroom, a safe haven for learning, is shaken by an unexpected intrusion. The sound of gunfire penetrates the walls, throwing the young students into panic. The classroom transforms into a scene of chaos as they hurriedly fall down to the floor to seek shelter against the menacing gunshot. To console Estrella amidst the chaos, her teacher extends a heartwarming gesture. She gives Estrella three chalk pieces, telling her that each one of them possesses the power to grant wishes, much like the enchanted artifacts in the stories Estrella and her peers are creating. It's a simple act of kindness, a beacon of hope during a chaotic moment. Soon after, the gunshots eventually recede, leaving behind a temporary stillness. Classes are suspended, and uncertainty hangs in the air as the students go back to their homes. In this momentary respite, Estrella is also on her way back home. On the way, she comes across a man named Chino who drives off in his car in a lifeless body, with blood surrounding it, concealed beneath a heavy carpet. Unbeknownst to her, as she goes, traces of blood begin to follow her, back at home. As Estrella calls out for her mother, a sense of disquiet settles in, culminating in her realization of the strange patterns of blood marks encircling her house. The blood creates an eerie path around her home, and goes on to dye one of the dresses, hanging around her house, red. In the midst of it all, Shine is back to his circle of companions, Pop, Tuxie, and Moro. These young souls share a bond stronger than mere friendship. They're a makeshift family, knit together by their shared circumstances as orphans, navigating the harsh streets, from the roots of their shared struggle. They've grown into a family, finding in each other the kind of support and camaraderie that the world outside rarely offers. As night descends, Moro, the youngest of the group, turns to Shine with a request for a bedtime story. In response, Shine starts narrating a tale, one involving a wild tiger who had escaped his prison and attacks random cats, dogs and even children with no parents. It's a way to momentarily escape their realities. As they reside within the realm of the imagination, but sadly, even in their imaginary realm, they are in danger. Across town, Estrella is feeling sad and lonely. The night stretches on, marked by the absence of her mother's return. Undeterred, she clings to hope. Her persistent attempts to reach her mother through the phone are met only with silence. The next morning, she sits outside and from her balcony, she catches a glimpse of Shine traversing the neighborhood with stuff attached to his back. Through the hours and as the day gives way to night, poor Estrella's unwavering wait for her mother's return continues. Amidst this waiting, fragments of her mother's memories keep filling her mind. Images come up of a time when Estrella and her mother shared a life brimming with contentment, despite their humble circumstances. She remembers the bracelet of her mother that she really wanted to possess. The contrast between then and now hangs heavily in the air, desperate to the brim. She uses the chalks given to her by her teacher to make a wish for her mother's return. Her heart's desire is simple. The poor girl only wants to have her mother back. Hope envelopes her, and as the night deepens, she suddenly senses a ghostly presence behind her. She feels as if the voice of her mother is calling for her. As she calls for her mother, all of a sudden, a hand brushes her shoulder but disappears as soon as it lands. The poor little girl, now terrified, screams and runs to seek refuge outside, under the night sky. The next day, Estrella wakes up due to a sudden commotion from inside her house. Thinking that it must be her mother, she investigates, only to find herself face to face with an unexpected visitor. A small figure, masked as a tiger, rummages through their belongings. A surge of determination wells up within Estrella, as she resolves to protect what little she has left. They engage in a small scuffle and the mask is pulled away, revealing the thief's identity. Turns out it is Shine. She struggles to take back her mother's belongings from the boy. The echoes of whispered voices again return to Estrella's ears, 
prompting a jolt of fear that propels her out into the night once more. Gazing down from the balcony, her eyes lock onto the familiar tiger mask, thrown there. Driven by an instinct of survival and determination, she chooses to follow the path Shine left behind. Her journey leads her to a hidden place, where the orphans have gathered. They sit around, having a meal among their collection of pilfered possessions. As her footsteps draw near, the group becomes aware of her presence and becomes alarmed. She sees Shine and asks him for food, however, instead of a warm welcome, she's met with a cold shoulder. They consider her an outsider who is unwelcome in their territory and tell her that she should return home. Undeterred by their caution, Estrella stands her ground, pushing past Shine's resistance. Her pleas strike a chord with Little Pop, who asks Shine to let her stay there. His words prompt a reluctant compromise from him, begrudgingly allowing Estrella to remain with them. Night settles in, and they quickly settle in for sleep. Starving and cold, she remains just outside their abode, finding solace there. Moro feels bad for the poor girl and extends a small act of kindness. He brings over a blanket and a biscuit to help her out. But the small biscuit does little to ease her starvation. Hunger persists, leading Estrella to explore discarded leftovers. As she is looking around, ghostly hands grab hold of her, prompting startled cries that pierce the night. Shine stirs from his sleep, his irritation evident, as he reprimands Estrella for her disruption before returning to sleep. The next day arrives with a sense of urgency as Shine rouses Estrella from her restless sleep. He urgently tells her to run, since the Huascas are arriving. Just then, the distant hum of an approaching car cuts through the tension, a clear warning sign. Wide-eyed and hearts pounding, Estrella and the fellow orphans run for their lives. The pursuers, led by the formidable Kako and his relentless companion, inch closer. The group springs into motion, leaping from rooftop to rooftop in a desperate bid for escape. Amidst the chaos, Estrella's hidden fear of heights makes her stop and freeze, asking Shine for help. Although he is reluctant at first, but after seeing the men approach, he helps the girl out. Shine then seizes the stolen gun, and threatens the men to go away or else he would take their lives. The gunshot cracks like thunder. In that heart-pounding instant, Kako grasps the truth about his stolen phone and gun. After barely managing to escape the threat in the heart of an abandoned alleyway, Shine and Estrella cross paths with Pop and Tuxi. Their expressions carry a weighty message, a message that brings a cloud of fear over them. The Huascas have captured Moro. All that's left behind is his beloved stuffed tiger. Shine is consumed by sorrow, his sadness turning into a fierce blaze of anger. Knowing that one of his dear friends is in danger fuels this fiery rage. As the seriousness of the situation sinks in for Estrella, she summons her courage and asks what has happened to those taken by the Huasca. Pop and Tuxi's words paint a grim picture. These innocent kids are taken far away to a place called Chino, where terrible things await them. Their young lives are torn apart. They also mention eerie rituals linking the gang to something sinister like they're connected to dark and evil forces. In the midst of this gritty and harsh reality, Shine's anger reaches its peak, and he points his finger at her, blaming her for the chaos that's unfolding. As the trio moves cautiously forward, Estrella speaks up with a daring proposition that she can make the Huascas vanish, grabbing everyone's attention. In a surprising twist, Shine hands her the stolen gun and dares her to do as she says. If Estrella can remove Kako from the picture, she can stay with them and have a place in their group. Fueled by unwavering determination, the group arrives at Kako's house, standing outside his door, separated by a fence. But when confronted with the reality of her proposed action, Estrella hesitates. Doubt creeps in, testing the resolve that brought her here. How can a little girl use the gun and take another person's life? Encouraging shouts from her companions urge her forward, reminding her to confront the daunting task at hand. Summing up all her courage, Estrella jumps down the fence, and shivering with fear, enters Kako's house. Inside, the shadows dance around her, lit only by the glow of a TV broadcasting the news. Her heart races as she steps forward, the weight of her mission heavy on her shoulders. With the gun in hand, she approaches her target. Estrella grasps the gun in one hand and a piece of chalk, a symbol of the power that guided her earlier. With a whispered plea, she wishes on the chalk that she may not have to take the man's life. It's a plea infused with the earnestness of a young heart, grappling with an unimaginable task. Suddenly, the man's arm drops limply by his side. She makes a startling discovery that Kako's life was snuffed out before she even arrived. As Estrella stands in shock, suddenly the snake on the gun comes alive and slithers down her arm, making her shriek and drop the gun, which fires off accidentally. The children outside hear the noise and assume that the girl completed the mission. Terrified, she tries to flee when she discovers a horrifying den hidden behind the house's back door. All of them are victims of the Huasca's cruelty. Unfazed by the daunting odds, Estrella frees the captives, guiding them towards freedom. Outside, emotions surge as the group reunites with their little Mora. Approaching Shine, Estrella returns the weapon. However, instead of taking the gun, Shine exits quietly, leaving the group to find their way back to safety. The boy must be feeling inferior since he had a chance to take out Kako twice, but couldn't. The newly expanded group return to their hideout and celebrate their victory, but Shine's solemn demeanor remains unchanged. Restlessness prompts Shine to turn to Estrella for answers. How did she manage the seemingly impossible? How could she easily do something that he couldn't for the life of him? Her response is simple yet astonishing, she made a wish. Suddenly, the tranquility is broken by a ringing phone. Shine takes out the phone and sees that it's Tio, the man connected to Kako. 
he quickly cuts the call. When the girl asks why he keeps the phone, he explains how the boys suffered due to Kako and his brothers in gay. Saying this, he swears and leaves the girl without a valid answer. Later that night, Estrella awakens after a fit of coughing and to her horror, strange insects emerge from her mouth. Terrified, a vision unfolds, leading her into an enigmatic encounter. She tries to hide inside her blanket, but suddenly feels the ghostly presence behind her, so she flees to hide. There, she hears a low murmur emanating from an empty cup. The ghostly voice cautions her that she is in danger due to Kako's death. She vehemently denies responsibility for his passing, but the mysterious voice persists, unveiling a chilling reality. The one who claimed Kako's life is now in pursuit of her. The ghostly voice directs her that when he comes for her, she must lead the person to the ghost. The next morning, amidst encroaching danger, the children face a crossroads. Since they are pursued by the Huasca, they must gather their meager belongings and move out and search for a new place. The new boys that they released from Kako's grasp turn out to be the members of a gang of homeless kids, just like them. They go to drop off the kids to the other gang, led by Bran. The leader, scared of Kako, tries to make the young boys go away, but Shine reveals that his gang got rid of Kako. As the reality sinks in, Bran is shocked to know how a girl was the one who did what the two gangs filled with boys couldn't. The group then go back afterwards, in search of a place to hide. Their search leads them to an abandoned mansion with a huge sprawling staircase that elicits wonder from the group of kids. Their new huge hideout stands in stark contrast to their previous one. As they descend the stairs, they find a pool of water filled with fish, and the younger members are thrilled. They soon run off upstairs to find more pleasant things leaving Shine and Estrella behind. The boy grunts and goes away too. Now left all alone, Estrella suddenly sees the bloodlines beckoning and following her. She tries to flee but the eerie stains seem to violently follow her. Desperate, she quickly enters a room and takes out the magic chalk to mark a line at the threshold. Surprisingly the blood stains stop and are kept out by the line. There, Estrella's gaze finds Shine. He is hunched over in a corner and looks as if he is crying. The girl approaches him and sees his tear-streaked face which is a contrast to his usual demeanor. Touched by a surge of empathy, she offers him a comforting presence. Their brief respite is shattered by the persistent ring of a phone. Shine takes out the phone to see Tio calling, so he answers. On the other side of the phone the man's rage reverberates. He curses at them and warns them that since the girl took his brother's life, he wouldn't let them off. They cut the call and reality of Bran's betrayal dawns on them. Estrella once again asks why the boy keeps the phone. Finally giving in to her question, he shows her the sole picture he possesses of his missing mother inside the phone. Turns out when Kako abducted her mother, he took it. As they sit there, suddenly they hear a commotion and run down to find the boys in possession of soccer balls. Amidst their trials, moments of ordinary joy find their way in. They play and laughter fills the air as the children adorn themselves with makeshift jersey numbers. Later, Estrella helps out little Moro in carefully mending his teddy bear. Shine, who was observing the girl, is happy to see the compassion he witnesses. The boy slowly starts to accept the girl in their group that he initially refused entry. The next morning, Shine finds Estrella sitting near the fish pond. They engage in a conversation about tigers, symbols of strength and resilience. As they discuss these majestic creatures, their words become a mirror to their own lives. In a moment of vulnerability, Shine shares his painful history about how his house was burned down and his mother was taken. He asks Estrella with a plea if her final wish erased the burn marks that mar his face. But, she refuses, saying that her wishes come with unintended consequences and that something bad always follows her. Later, in order to bring Estrella a little happiness, Shine undertakes a solo mission to retrieve her mother's photograph from her home. However, as he visits her home, strange and eerie things start happening around him, sending shivers down his spine. The little boy fearfully runs outside. Unfortunately, his escape is cut short, as he bumps into none other than Tio. Swift and merciless, Tio seizes Shine and demands he reveal the whereabouts of the girl who took his brother's life. Meanwhile, Estrella's search for Shine leads her through the entire mansion that they reside in. As she scans her surroundings, her gaze locks onto a chilling sight. Tio looms just beyond the windows, talking to someone on the phone. Fearing for her safety, she runs into a dark room, her heart racing. As she holds the door, she again hears whispers of the ghost calling her. Within these walls, another haunting vision unfolds before her, as the apparitions of her mother and other victims materialize. They call Estrella to bring the brutal gang to where they wait for them. Overwhelmed by fear, Estrella flees into the open, only to be captured by Tio. The children are corralled into one space. They demand for the phone but when they don't give them, Tio orders his subordinate to take Shine's life. In an attempt to protect his friend, Moro fires at the man and saves Shine. But the retaliation is swift and brutal, as Moro falls big bullets, his life extinguished in an instant. In an act of vengeance, Pop strikes back, inflicting harm on Tio before they carry away Moro's lifeless body from the scene. Back in safety, grief washes over the group as they huddle within a new refuge. Moro's lifeless body lies in the middle as the group surrounds it with tears. The uncertain future hangs heavily over them, and both Shine and Estrella are haunted by questions, pushing them to closely examine the phone. Their investigation uncovers a disturbing video linking Chino to the passing of a woman. As he watches the video, 
The violence scares Estrella, who shouts at him to stop it. Suddenly a small black dragon comes out of the phone that only she sees. Fueled by desperation for safety, Estrella makes a daring move by calling Chino, initiating a tense negotiation. An agreement is reached, they will meet at an old spa by the railroad, the deadline of 7 in the morning. The man asks her to bring the phone in return for the annihilation of the Huasca, or resist and face the wrath of Chino's revenge. The shocking revelation that Chino was the real orchestrator of Kako's slaughter ignites a maelstrom of emotions, kindling a fiery anger within Shine. He accuses Estrella of lying and the trust that once bound them shatters. In an instant, the unity that held them together breaks. He gathers the rest of the group and departs, leaving her behind in the aftermath. As the night's darkness surrounds her, Estrella finds herself immersed in a realm where reality and the otherworldly intertwine. In a surreal vision, Moro emerges from the beyond, accompanied by his loyal stuffed tiger. An eerie whisper carries his voice, calling her name. When she turns around, she finds his corpse sitting up, covered with the blanket. Her surroundings shift, transforming into a haunting scene of souls. Victims of the Huasca's brutality, who beckon her with a chilling demand. They want her to lead Chino to them. Baffled and terrified, Estrella runs out only to be followed by them. She then desperately seeks refuge in a room, holding on to the mantra that tigers are not afraid. But her efforts are in vain as the ghost infiltrator's sanctuary, slipping through a drain. Their presence becomes almost inescapable as they claw at her, trying to drag her to them. After struggling for a while, the little girl finally breaks free and runs out, amidst her turmoil. The small dragon appears again, following her. On the other side, Tuxie seizes an opportunity, snatching the phone from Shine's possession. The promise of potential help drives him to convince Pop that reporting the crime to the police might lead to their salvation. Poor little fool. If the police were to help, wouldn't they just stop the Huascas? Still, they hold on to hope and armed with the incriminating video. They approach a police car just down the corner, hopeful that justice will prevail. But their hope dwindles as the officer's reluctance becomes evident, feared by the identity of the criminal. Instead of aid, the boys are turned away and the terrified so-called officers flee. Shine, who was looking from the corner, regains possession of the phone. After reprimanding them, he focuses on the phone once more and finds a crucial detail in the video. A bracelet strikingly similar to the one Estrella's mother wears in a photograph. He finally understands the connection and his heart sinks. They run back to where they left the girl, only to find the space empty. The boys cover the cold corpse and pick it up to carry it away so it won't be alone. Poor little kids. Back in an open park, Estrella sits along with Moro's spirit, who tells her that the boys are taking his body to be buried. She asks about the location and he guides her. Following his guidance, Estrella finally reaches the place where he is being buried. When they ask how she found them, she says that Moro told her but they do not believe her words. They call her a heartless liar. Shine then presents her with a photograph of her mother he found at her home. This moves her to tears. She insists that meeting with Chino is their only path to salvation, a decision the group finally agrees upon. After the summer act of laying Moro to rest, the group gathers at the bus stop, scared of what might happen next. Soon a bus arrives and they all board it. Before going in, Estrella holds the phone up, and the small dragon once again goes inside the object. The group arrives at the place and waits for the man to arrive. The next morning, Chino, along with two others, stands in the place of the meeting. In the dimly lit hallways of the old building, the exchange is carried out. Shine surrenders the phone claiming ignorance of its password. Suddenly, the scene is shattered by a sudden eruption of Shino holds up his end of the bargain by coldly executing Tio and his companion. The phone also meets its end under Chino's foot. Amid the chaos, Pop and Tuxi flee, escaping the turmoil that has erupted around them. Finally getting rid of the evidence against him, Chino turns his attention to Estrella and Shine. He tells them that he has upheld his side of the deal, silencing the Huascas thus they may go away, since he does not want to see them again. As they run, Estrella finally understands that the woman in the video was indeed her mother. When she asks Shine, he merely gives her the phone. He admits that he still has Kako's phone and he gave a fake to Chino. The woman from the haunting video, she was Estrella's mother all along. Getting emotional and despite the dangers, she tells Shine that she would make a wish to dispose of Chino. The boy does not believe in her so she takes a bold step as she employs a chalk mark on his face and wishes for his scar to disappear. Suddenly a trail of blood approaches the boy and dyes his foot red. Then, Estrella hears a gunshot that fatally hits Shine, making him disappear instead of the scar. The petrified girl hears an enraged Chino's voice. It turns out that he has finally found out that the phone was swapped. Estrella runs for her life following the blood trail and navigating through vents to escape him. There, she is guided by Moro's teddy bear who gives her a lighter and leads her to the chamber of the deceased. There, a chilling scene awaits her. Among the lifeless forms, she sees her mother's corpse that beckons her, offering a fleeting reunion. As the corpse caresses her face, the bracelet in her hand comes to life and leaves her hand to come and etch itself onto Estrella's. Back outside, Chino receives a call and follows its sound to the chamber of the deceased. As he enters, the door closes behind him. Revenge takes shape as all the corpses come to life and attack their slayer. Outside, Estrella hears the voices of the departed finding satisfaction. As she turns around, she finds the soul of Shine standing before her. She hands him the lighter and says her goodbyes. As she leaves, she sees him approaching the room with the lighter, ready to burn the man who burned down his home. 
The movie ends with Estrella seeing a tiger and remembering that she is just like him, a warrior. Her journey concludes in an open field, as a survivor, carrying the weight of her experiences and the memories of those she has lost. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.